In Lab 3, we examine the causes of tropical cyclones. There are two major concepts that I want you to master in Lab 3. The first is that oceans circulate due to the Coriolis force. This causes water temperatures in the oceans to not be the same everywhere. The second major concept is that warm water has more energy than cold water. Let's take a look at the sea surface temperature. I'm going to pull up the global sea surface temperature visualization from Lab 1. Now I'm recording this in the middle of April, so it's spring in the northern hemisphere. Notice that off the west coast of North America, the waters are very chilly, around 55 degrees Fahrenheit, which is why surfers in California wear wetsuits. On the other hand, the waters off the eastern coast of the USA uh, are in the 70s and even up to 80 degrees. At the same latitude, notice that the waters off the east coast are much warmer than the waters off the west coast. The reason for this is that oceans in the northern hemisphere circulate clockwise due to the Coriolis force. So they heat up in the tropics and then they move up the east coast of North America with warm water. On the other hand, off the west coast of North America, the same clockwise circulation brings cold water down from the poles. So, they, so the water off the west coast is much, much colder. Recall that warm water has more latent heat energy stored than cold water. Let's take a look at how this fuels cyclones. In the lab, you're first asked to determine the differences in saturation vapor pressure between two temperatures. To do this, use the table provided in the lab. Difference means subtraction, so for the first two questions, simply subtract the saturation vapor pressure associated with each temperature. Next, you will need to calculate relative humidity. The key here is to remember that relative humidity is content divided by capacity. So look up the air's capacity to hold water at the given temperature using the table provided in the lab. Finally, I wanted to share with you a graphic that I use in my face-to-face -face class to help students understand how warm water fuels cyclones. Let's start out with two samples of ocean water. The one on the left is cooler, the one on the right is warmer. At a smaller quantity of water evaporates from the cooler ocean water because the air above the water is cooler as well, since the troposphere is heated by the surface. Recall that cold air has a smaller capacity to hold water than warm air. The air cools adiabatically at the standard lapse rate. When it reaches its dew point temperature, water is forced to condense from a gas to a liquid and energy is released. The warmer sample has more water in vapor form and condenses more water and releases more energy. Okay, that's about it for Lab 3. Make sure to cite evidence from the data provided on the lab in your question write-ups. If you have questions, please post in the frequently asked questions or send me a private message. Happy trails!